Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings, where we are not going to continue from this save in the Galzud Kaganate. Now, you will note that it's 1.5.1. .1. We are now on the correct version of the game, so this save game is likely borked anyway, but it's over, so there's that. We are going to be creating a new game, and to that end, we have a little bit of an issue. Specifically, if we hop over to display capture here so that I can actually capture the browser. Actually, let me go back to the actual poll. There we go. Okay, so 46% of you are voting for war at all times. And 40% of you are voting for peace at all times. So I'm going to be honest, I was expecting the pacifism one to win. Technically, the bellicose one has won. I think I'm going to tell the U46% maybe go back and watch the Mongol game because that was almost entirely war of one sort or another. However, I don't think, given the result of this poll, I don't think that we should do a pure pacifist game. I do think that a pacifist game, especially with the current setup, in the, uh, what's it called? The Royal Court, which I haven't experienced yet. This will be my first experience of Royal Court. I do think that a pacifism game will allow us to experience that a little more, but we're not going to go full bore because there was a comment that I really, really like. Now, a lot of you guys didn't give many ideas for where we're going to start, although Brittany or Sardinia, these are somewhat interesting. I tend to prefer not to start in Europe, but uh, we'll see. Angerman land? We can look into it, maybe. But specifically, it is this comment by James Tatsumi here that I found fascinating. Start by conquering some land, then reform religion and culture to pacifism once you have an empire. That kind of allows us to play both of the uh, options here. And there was also a lot of... Uh, talk about how the non-stop war and chaos wasn't so great, but there was also some talk that is apparently not showing up now, maybe the comment was deleted or something, about how a pacifist run might- oh, here it is, actually. A pacifist run may become boring after a while. That might be true, we'll see. As, as far as the royal court run with a goal of collecting all artifacts, it's an interesting idea. I haven't played royal court. I don't know what that entails, we might. We'll see. We're definitely not looking to expand super wide the way we did previously. Let me go back to the actual game here. And we need to decide where we're going to start. So we're going to do a new game here. We're going to be starting in 867. I prefer to start in the earliest start dates possible. We're going to play as any ruler. Or create our own. And we're probably not going to create our own. I don't think there's a huge amount of point to that. Okay, so here we are in beautiful, beautiful 867. We uh, started up here last time. It looks like there's been some changes up here. Well, we started in Koterra, actually. So maybe there hasn't been changes. Now, Brittany, Sardinia, those were options that were mentioned. I don't know exactly where Angerman Land is. Can we search? Apparently, we cannot. Okay, ah, here it is. So that's another interesting option. Now, I don't think that the starting off until we get an empire and then going pacifist after that, well, I don't know, maybe that is appropriate for, for the uh, Scandinavian nations. That's kind of what they ended up doing in history. If you look at it in kind of a long-term thing, right? That's kind of what ended up happening. Had the whole Viking raids thing, and then the the Swedish Empire, and then just kind of... Not really nothing, but not really much expansion beyond that. So, I mean, that's possibly interesting. We could go for Scandinavia. It's a little European for me, but it's not like, you know, Germania or something. I was thinking potentially there was... It wasn't in the comment thread there, but there was another post quite a long time ago. Might have been in the Discord? I'm not sure where. But uh, it was about starting on the Isle of Man. 
That's an interesting one, too. I do like that start. If we did that, we would not be able to move our capital off of the Isle of Man. That would be definitely a rule that we would make. It's, it's certainly interesting. It's got itself kind of a nice little bottleneck here. It's quite defensible. I do like territories like that. There's also a lot of easily ex expanded territory, particularly out in Ireland. If we were to do that, we'd be going after the Britannia Empire. We need to think about what empire we're going after, because I think I'm pretty well sold. Is this within Scandinavia? Uh, yes. I think I'm pretty well sold on the concept of we play fairly standard until we get an empire. And then from there, we go pacifist through through cultural and, well, maybe not necessarily cultural, but religious reformation. I think that that's a definitely an interesting concept. So. Actually, hang on. Let me go back here. Did I close that? No, I did not. Okay, so let me reread this comment here. I probably should have made these decisions beforehand. <laughs> but here we are. Um, let's see. And try to reconvert all of Scandinavia back to the As Asatru religion. Okay, what does that religion actually do right now? So that is this religion here. All of this over here is currently that. Although not all of this is. Okay. So what exactly is that religion? So we need to take a look here. This would be an interesting start for sure. It'd be a single county. Uh-huh. So what are these tenants? They've got patron gods. They're a warmonger. That's interesting. So we could do that. And then once we have the empire made, then we reform the faith and remove warmonger and go pacifist. Hmm. Here's the thing. In order to go beyond tribal era, we will need to reform the faith. So if we go this route, We have to form the empire and perhaps have the entire empire, like the entire de jure empire, under our thumb before we reform. And at that point, we reform into pacifism and transition into a pure pacifist game. That's interesting to me. We're going to be pretty tech limited until such a time as we get our empire. Then we're going to be able to tech up, build tall, and all of our money pretty much is going to be invested into structures, including vassal structures. But I want to keep our size a little more under control, which pacifism would force. We can only inherit territory at that point, which means we only get territory when we die. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be interesting, for sure. I think this is what we're going to go with. Game rules-wise, we're probably going to do this default. The only thing that's different here... Uh, what was not on default here? There. I'm not sure what was not on default there. Exclave independence, AI only. That's interesting. But we're going to run this on pure default. Are we going to run this on normal difficulty? I usually do... What are the options? Normal, very easy, easy, and normal. I haven't even looked at these before. Um, I expected there to be more difficult options, and I might have gone for those. But I guess we'll run on normal, and we're just going to run completely default. We would be able to get achievements if we did not have, or if we had Iron Man on. And the reason that I don't use Iron Man is because it's very possible with Iron Man that something bad happens to the save. And that's no good for content. So that's the only reason I don't run on Iron Man. And coincidentally, that's also the reason why I don't have a single achievement in Crusader Kings 3. But that doesn't really matter. So we don't have a player error. We are 22. We are patient, vengeful, and wrathful. 
interesting. So I think overall, this is completely and totally fine. We're leaving this on completely default. And let's see. I believe yeah, 1453 is fine. <laughs> we don't really care about going beyond that for now. Yeah, I think we do this. I think that's our plan. So we go ahead and start this. Apparently we got an instant sun. Okay. So we can have concubines. I do want to take a look at our faith here. So we're male-dominated, pluralist, and theocratic. Sure. Uh, sins are deceitful, craven, and forgiving. Giving? Oh my, okay. Virtues are wrathful, brave, vengeful, one-eyed, and poet. <laughs> Fascinating. Marriage type allows concubines. That's convenient. Divorce is always allowed by spending piety. Interesting. Bastardry allows legitimization. Okay, we're on cousin marriage. Criminal, 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 criminal. Close kin is criminal. Interesting. And criminal. And for clergy doctrines, the clerical function is recruitment. Cool. Clerical gender is either. Clerical appointment is temporal and revocable. Fascinating. And clerical marriage is allowed. Cool. So what's our holy sites? Spicy. Okay. It's going to be a bit before we have all those. Okay, sounds good. So, that's our religion. Now then, we don't have a lifestyle. Do we have an education? Uh, we are an astute intellectual. So, I guess we're going to go for learning and maybe work our way down the scientific tree. For the time being, we could go for a scholarship focus. It's awkward, for sure. Have I ever played a Scandinavian nation before? I'm just noticing the UI elements over here. I'm not sure I have. Huh. <laughs> so we can hire a court physician. There's not a point in doing that. Okay. So at this moment, we are not yet pacifist. But these are all slightly different as well. Kind of runic inspired. That's neat. How many soldiers do we have? Well, that's um an interesting number. Okay. So of course, our pr because we're tribal, our men at arms are prestige. Now we don't really want to rush feudal. But if we go into our... This is new. <laughs> you can definitely see that I have not... Uh, I, I have not played Royal Court yet. We'll get to some of that stuff. But for now, we are currently a bellicose ethos. So this then means, with the addition of this cultural tab, that we are probably better off after we go to pacifism, switching off of Norse culture, which is currently bellicose. Scheme secrecy minus 15%. Poet traits have additional bonuses. Can recruit certain types of men-at-arms. Sure. Can enact the Scandinavian elective succession law. Now that's something we'll need to look at. Uh, let's see here. Well, that's um, inauspicious. Do we have to get... Do I have to unlock these traditions? We're at four of five. Okay, interesting. Well, for right now, we are of course going to be in the tribal age. And uh, this is blocked for a tribal government, of course. So we would need to adopt feudal ways, which, let's see, yes, this still requires being an organized faith. Just wanted to check that. So that's going to be a while. No doubt about that. For the tribal era, what are we going to go for? We already have quilted armor and mustering grounds. We also already have currency and gavel kind and plenary assemblies. Okay, sure. We also start with longships, Varangian adventurers, as well as all things. Tribal vassal opinion. Okay, cool. Unlocks that CB during the tribal era. A special type of war where the attacker intends to move their realm to the war target wholesale. If they win, they'll immediately annex the appropriate counties and move their capital there. Their old vassals will go independent, and their old counties will be given to upstart local warlords. Weird. We are not going to be using that. 
but that is against what we're going for. Okay, cool. We also have access to longships, which is very convenient. Minus 75% embarkation cost is a pretty big deal. Now, we're currently fascinating Ledger, and we're exposed to Onager. Overall, I feel like that's pretty okay. We might want to grab Mots instead of Ledger. Crop rotation would be good too, but I think Mots would be bigger for now. Oh, this guy's the cultural head. We're not the cultural head. Okay, <laughs> right. This guy is the cultural head. Okay, so we should definitely look around us at what we might have for expansion opportunities. And those are meager. Okay. I'm wondering if we're going to have to work our way up from the inside of a kingdom. That's possible. Now, these are all duchy levels. Well, this is a county tier, and so is this. This has a bunch of counties in it, though. Okay. So we're unlikely to be able to win wars against anyone except maybe this guy. Now, we could do a subjugation CP. That would cost 500 prestige. We don't have much prestige right now. We could also do a conquer county, which would cost us piety, which is actually better. Now, do we think we can win this? Probably not. We should look at our men-at-arms. Our men-at-arms are light infantry. Or actually, no, these are technically archers. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we do have a couple of special types. We've got the Varangian veterans. These are heavy infantry. They counter spearmen and heavy cavalry. We've got these guys who are spearmen, who counter light cavalry and archers. And are they just the same as regular spearmen? No, they are not. They're much cheaper, but they counter fewer things. They are definitely cheaper, though. So, like, if you compare... Well, the bowmen are actually cheaper than the, the vigmen. Fascinating. And the bowmen are better. Well, the Vigmen have more toughness, and they have the screen as well that the Bowmen don't. The Bowmen do more damage, but the Vigmen are tougher. Okay. There's also the Huskarls over here. So 42, 47, 26, 30. Okay, so no pursuit. These guys have 10 pursuit. The Huskarls have screen, 24 of it. The Varangian veterans do not. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, we don't have a ton of prestige right now. And we're not making a ton of prestige either. For the time being, we may want to just raid. However, raiding either of these two is risky. So that's definitely a potential issue. I do think that we'll increase our size to two here. And we've got these three that are our champions right now. Okay. Mercs are not really a thing at the moment. Okay, so that put us negative in prestige. Right. We do need a bunch of gold here. So what we're going to do is... We're actually not going to declare war. We are going to come down over here and we're going to raise local raiders. They'll raise instantly. And we're going to head down and see if we can do any raiding down here. Now, he does have slightly more troops than we do, in theory. He has 476. Raid or trade, huh? Well, we could continue raiding here. This would spend 75 prestige. Hmm. Hmm. No, I don't think this is really useful. Pillage it anyway. So he's going to raid, raise up his troops over here. We are likely to lose this. What do we have for commanders? We've got this guy. He is ourselves leading it. And he is the best that we've got. Now, they are led by their chieftain. They have slightly more troops than we do in levies. They also have another, an additional champion over us. 
And they have these spearmen. Now, these spearmen, they counter light cavalry and archers. So they actually counter our men-at-arms, our Vigmen here. So we're going to lose this. Unless we roll just incredibly well. And we're not. <laughs> sure. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to feel that out, see how that felt. Now we know. We're out of here. We do, of course, need a steward, and we will put in this guy as the best we've got. He's, he was also our marshal. Okay. We don't actually have anyone who can go here. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Cool. So we obviously... Oh, yeah, we need to determine our personal deity. So we could become a devotee of Odin and gain piety per dread. Marshal plus three, an advantage in the winter. Stewardship and prowess, fertility and control growth. Interesting. I'm leading, leaning towards this guy. Marshal plus three. Let's do it. I also want to make sure that we are... Uh, ooh. This is different. I like this. This is neat. We've got this court here. Yes. Also, where is the royal court, actually? I, I don't know how to get to that. That's something I should probably figure out. These are our empty court positions here. For now, they're going to have to remain empty. Obviously. But yes, I don't, I don't know how to get to the royal court. So that's something that'll be interesting. We're going to just put these guys down. Or actually, we can't. Because these guys are too close. Now that's awkward. <laughs> okay. So that's fine, I guess. I guess. But I wanted to go into our council and make sure that this guy is organizing the army, which he is. Our spy master here needs to be... Disrupting schemes is fine. They inverted the order on these? Okay. Interesting. We're on assist ruler here. We don't really need to be anywhere in particular. I think we're going to go for chivalry to boost up our soldier count. Excellent. We're going to head back down over here. These guys will reinforce over time. Eventually. Eventually. We have no unraised soldiers, I believe. Correct. So as these replenish, they will get over here. And... I'm hoping that we're going to be able to beat these guys. But we do need our soldiers to replenish at some point. They could stop being a raiding army. And maybe that would do it. Get them to start replenishing. Yes. Now they're replenishing. Okay, good. So apparently raiding armies either don't replenish or they just weren't for whatever reason. Well, that's fine for now. And now we can disband them. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we're going to wait for our soldiers to replenish. And then we may actually attack this guy instead of raiding him. We may do a county conquer. Because we will have enough once our, once our soldiers regenerate. They're not regenerating very quickly. 9 per month and 20 per month. The Vigmen are the more important ones, but of course, now we know, and we could have checked, now we know that he has a counter to our Vigmen, and we may want to think about changing this. Or getting more men-at-arms, but we really can't afford the prestige for that right now, so that's probably not going to be what we're going to do. I think we're just going to wait for reinforcement here, and then we're going to go raiding a little bit. I think that's going to be the overall goal for this moment. Of course, we will be becoming pacifists, but now is not the time for that. There will be a time for that later. Excellent. Now, you'll notice we're not also going just absolutely aggro. We're kind of middle of the roading it right now because we kind of can't go absolutely aggro at this moment, given our start. For the record. <laughs> so uh, I'm trying to cater to both sides of that particular poll. I expected it to be much more lopsided one way or the other, but... This is going to be the overall plan. We're going to we're going to warmonger a bit once we get a little bit more established. We're not in a position to be able to do that instantly. 
So there we are. It is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to begin work on the Empire of Scandinavia. Did I just do the uh, outro? I don't think I did. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I'll see you all next time when hopefully I'm just a little bit less confused. <laughs> that would be nice.